All right, so right now we're doing the uh, salt and pepper separation mixture for our physics project. And the first thing we need to do is magnet or uh, charge. statically charge the comb using a balloon. Just gotta, you know, key is to get it in there really fast and uh, charge, charge pretty for well. For about 20 to 30 seconds. Keep going. It gets a little hot, but the harder you do it, the more results you get, you know. Oh, there we go. Let's try it now. All right. All right, so now we're going to stick it to the salt and pepper mixture. And if you can see, the pepper magically Magic. sticks to scientifically the, sticks to the combs being separated from the salt. So there's uh, actually many uh, realistic applications of static electricity and uh, one of these is static electricity used in power plants. And what they do is, like let's say it's a coal burning plant, um, they're going to want to reduce the amount of emissions that they release into the atmosphere. and. You may wonder how they do this. Well, what they do is they statically charge their smokestack where they're burning the coal. So they're burning the coal in the power plant and it's going, all the coal um, particulates are gonna raise through the smokestack. But you don't want it to go into the atmosphere. So what they do is they statically charge the walls of the smokestack and since the coal particles, particulates, are, are so, uh, so light, they'll actually be attracted to the walls and won't release into the atmosphere or it will reduce the amount of uh, burned uh, combusted product into the atmosphere. And then the, the workers of the power plant can actually clean the stack later and uh, dispose of those particulates properly. So similar to our uh, simple experiment with the comb, we determined that we can statically charge through the comb and then attract particles by uh, applying the comb near the surface of the particle. And we also realized that you can actually uh, induce or emit uh, magnet magnetic radiation from the comb by uh, statically charging it, and then after you statically charge it, you rapidly shake it up and down. And when you do that, you're actually moving the electrons in the cone that you created from, by statically charging it. Uh, and this re results in the formation of wave energy. And we know that the speed of the wave travels at the, at the speed of light. So given the frequency, we can find the wavelength and uh, vice versa, we can find the wavelength, or we can find the frequency given the wavelength via this equation. So C equals F being frequency times wavelength represented by L. C would be speed of light, 3E8, and given whatever frequency we can it. So um, we learned earlier that by shaking our comb up and down after it's statically charged, you're actually moving the electrons that are in the comb um, or surrounding the comb as well. Uh, you're moving those up and down when you move the comb up and down. And the faster you move it up and down, the faster the frequency or the higher the frequency is going to be and the shorter the wavelength. Anyways, this is the same, it's the same concept as like a radio tower when you have let's say the radio station and you have the antenna and you have an electron in, in, in the antenna and 
what they do is they are going to move the electron up and down and what that causes is it causes the electron and the faster they do it the higher the frequency is going to be so they're going to move it up and down and what will happen is a wave will start to form and that's because you're moving the electron up and down and if you move it faster then the frequency will become higher and then vice versa if you move it slower it'll stretch out the, wa the, the wavelength and when so, and then your car's antenna, or even like another house, let's say you're at, at, in your house and you listen to the radio. Your house is going to have an antenna, and then it's going to pick up that frequency. So electromagnetic waves transport energy through empty space by um, storing the energy and propagating uh, electric and magnetic fields. And what we have here is we have the electric field going up and it's, os it's oscillating back and forth. And, and then this would be our wavelength. And perpendicular to this is going to be our magnetic field. And these form the electromagnetic wave. And what this is, is this is just our electric field crossed with our magnetic field forming the electromagnetic magnetic wave. And when you, um, and then you can find the direction of the electromagnetic wave by crossing the electric field with the magnetic field. And the, the direction of the wave is going to be perpendicular to both the electric electromagnetic field as well as the or the electric field as well as the magnetic field.